what we have right here where I'm sitting is a Japanese bathhouse or the foundation of a Japanese bathhouse. Um, but when we first came across it, it was about 99% uh, buried. It was only the small little tips of some of these rocks were being exposed. It was, it was I was convinced that there would be a bathhouse here, so I searched and searched the site until I eventually found this. What you have here is this stone foundation with an open end on it. There would have been a fire um, built underneath the, underneath or in the center. A tub with a metal bottom and wooden sides um, would have sat over this. It would have been heated from the fire below, and you'd heat, yeah, you'd heat it through firewood from this way. There would have been a building around the entire structure. Um, what we've excavated here, we've excavated uh, the, all these walls. It's about five feet deep, about three feet across, fire underneath. We found evidence of charred wood from the fire. We found evidence of the actual tub in terms of the pieces of metal uh, into the wooden sides. Around the perimeter, we found a thousand nails which reflect the shape and the size of the, the hut structure around it. The only artifacts we found in here were a ladle to what they would have used to like take water and cleanse themselves and we found bits of a camera in here. This is some of the good evidence, evidence that we have that it, to support my hypothesis that this site continued to be occupied after its initial period of logging um, from about the early 1920s right up until 1942. I think this became like a, a kind of a secret uh, residential camp for Japanese people who wanted to, to live here rather than, in, rather than Vancouver or elsewhere. We have uh, other lines of evidence uh, that we have includes the fact that they were hiding expensive objects on sites. We have a very high percentage of personal artifacts. We have dishes that are in very good condition. It seems to be that uh, in 1942, when the Japanese were interred, the people essentially closed the doors of their small houses and just walked away. And so what we're finding now is the remains of what was in those small cabins and things like this bathhouse. Elsewhere on the site, we have the remains of what is probably a small shrine. We have a water reservoir, we have a latrine, we have a cold storage area, we have a garden. Um, overall, I estimate about 50 Japanese people were living here um, from the late 1920s until 1942 when they went to relocation camps. Okay, what we have right here where we're excavating is, uh, to me, it's pretty clear evidence of a, of sort of a small house um, that was occupied like, you know, close to 100 years ago. Uh, there was nothing visible on the surface except a couple of small pieces of broken lantern glass that had been brought up by some tree roots. So based on my experience here um, previously, I knew that there was probably going to be a household here. So subsequently, we've uh, confirmed that by the excavating these units here. We found pieces of a uh, cook stove. We have found uh, pieces of lantern glass, which would have been original. We find uh, bottles. We find a number of nails, which would be indications of the structure. All the wood has since decomposed, but we have that evidence of the structure. So we're still excavating here. Um, we don't know what this uh, rock feature is here, but we do see the bottles underneath those rocks. Mm -hmm. 